Chapter 60, Long Forgotten Chalk Ice. The tall double doors at the end of the children's ward swung open and Tom's mum and dad entered. Tommy! screamed his mother. She opened her arms and Tom ran towards her. The woman scooped him up and gave him the biggest hug. Tom's father was not so good at such moments and gave his son a manly pat on the back. Good to see you, son, he said. Tom's mum and dad had deep tans from being out in the desert and were dressed in clothes better suited to, be, to being there. It was clear they must have rushed to be here. A young girl called Sally phoned us and said we should come and see you, said mum. Sally, exclaimed Tom. Yes, lovely girl. Found our phone number in the matron's papers somewhere. Said we should come straight away. Me and your dad were both so worried about you. That's Sally there, said Tom, pointing to the girl in the far corner of the ward. Good morning, Mr and Mrs Charper, called out Sally. Good morning, dear, replied Mum. You must come and stay with us. Oh, I'd love that, said Tom. Me too, said Sally. This blasted matron woman put the phone down on us every time we called the ward to try and speak to you, said Dad. We were desperate for news of you. The school secretary called us after you were hit on the head playing cricket. We must have called the hospital a hundred times. Now, how is that bump on your head? Much better, thanks, Dad, replied Tom with a smile. Good, good. And Mum and Dad, I had no idea you wrote to me. Every week, without fail, we sent a letter to St Willits, said Mum. Did you not receive them? No, not one. Hmm, that doesn't make sense, said Dad. Mr Thews, my headmaster, burned them all. Dad looked angrier than Tom had ever seen him before. If I ever see that man again... Stay calm, Malcolm, shouted Mum. Dad breathed a heavy, heavily for a few moments and his anger cooled. Well, son, rest assured that we are never sending you back to that awful school again, he said. Yes, exclaimed Tom. We'll all be together from now on, said Mum. A proper family. Come on, son, said Dad. At that moment, Tootsie came in with her breakfast trolley. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. Perfect, muttered Tom to himself. I'll just miss, bre I'll just miss breakfast. The boy pulled the curtain back. Thomas, are you leaving us? She cried. Yes, and I'm sad to say that I won't be staying for breakfast. Oh, what a terrible shame. And I have everything on my trolley this morning. Of course you do. Another time, perhaps. Yes. Oh, and I think I found your headmaster, Mr Thews, added Tootsie. When? Where? asked Tom. This very morning, in the deep freezer. What? Somehow, you must have got shut in there overnight. He was looking at me in the deep, in, in the deep freeze last night. Horrible man. He just got his desserts, exclaimed Tom. So where is he now? Right here, said Tootsie, whipping a large cloth off her breakfast trolley. It was indeed Mr Thews lying there, shivering. The man was covered in frost like a long-forgotten chalk ice. Help! mumbled the headmaster. It was all but impossible for him to speak as his teeth were chattering so much. I should really take him down to see if the doctors and nurses can thaw him out, said Tootsie. There's no rush, replied Tom with a smile. Chapter 61. A Tender Kiss From out of the matron's office, Thomas Senior limped into the ward. The man had been sleeping after the adventures of last night and looked a little unsteady on his feet. However, on seeing the hospital principal, Sir Quentin Strillers, in the children's ward, he woke up in an instant. Oh, uh, mm, uh, good morning, Mr Quentin, sir. Ah, oh, good morning, Thomas Senior. So, are you absolutely sure I can keep my job, Sir Quentin, sir? No, replied Sir Quentin. I am sorry to say I have changed my mind. But you said, protested Tom. I haven't finished yet, boy, snapped Strillers. Seeing how happy you made the children, I have decided to change your role at this hospital. Oh, yes, Sir Quentin, sir. Yes, you are now in charge of the children's ward. I think your title should be... Doctor of fun. Hooray, shouted the children. Oh, thank you, Sir Quentin, sir. I love it, said Thomas Senior. As his parents looked on, Tom rushed over to congratulate his friend. The boy threw his arms around his, the new Doctor of fun's waist. 
I'm so happy for you, he exclaimed. Oh, thank you, replied the man as the other children rushed over to hug him too. Amber struggled with her broken arms, but found a way. But I don't think you should sleep in the basement of the hospital any more, added Sir Quentin. No, Sir Quentin, sir, replied Thomas Senior. I am sorry, sir. Tootsie approached the man. Well, if you need somewhere to stay, you can always sleep on my sofa. Really? asked Thomas Senior. Yes, that's very kind of you. I have never had a proper home before. Free breakfast included, replied, it, replied Tootsie. Well, I don't normally eat breakfast, lied the man, but thank you for the offer of the sofa. That would be truly wonderful. Well, it seems a great deal has changed since you were admitted here, boy, began Sir Quentin. All for the better, I have to say. It was a great pleasure to have you at Lord Funt Hospital, Tim. It's Tom, replied Tom. Are you sure? Quite sure, sir, and thank you. We'd really better get going now, son, called Tom's dad. Just a moment, dad, replied the boy. I need to say goodbye to my friends. Tom rushed over to Sally first. So did your dream come true after all, Tom, said Sally. So your dream did come true after all, Tom, said Sally. What did I tell you? Tom smiled. All thanks to you, Sally. The boy looked over to his other friends. I r I'm really going to miss you guys. And we're all going to miss you too, said George. Although, on the upside, there'll be more chocolates for me and I won't have to share them with you any more. The Midnight Gang just won't be the same without you, added Amber. I wish you didn't have to go, Tom, said Sally. Tom placed a tender kiss on top of his friend's bald head. I am sorry, but I have to. Will you come and visit me here in hospital, asked Sally. Yes, replied Tom. Promise? I promise, and I won't break it this time. The pair shared a smile. And I will never forget you, said Robin. Sorry, what was your name again, he joked. They all laughed. Goodbye, gang, said Tom. I th I'll think of you every night at midnight, wherever you we are, whatever we're doing. Let's meet in our dreams and have the wildest of adventures. The boy walked towards the double doors. There, he took his parents' hand in his and clasped them tight. Now they were a family again, and he never wanted to let go. Tom turned back to take the final look at his friends before he disappeared from view. The epilogue. Moments later, the tall doors of the children's wards swung open again. A man in pyjamas marched in, his fingers bandaged up. I have a very serious complaint, Raj announced angrily. What? asked George. I never did get my takeaway. But, 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 let me just repeat my order. What do you think Raj is going to ask for? I think he's going to ask for three lots of poppadoms. Because poppadoms you can never have enough. Hope you've enjoyed the Midnight Gang. Maybe you could tell Mrs. Rogers or Mrs. Um, Hunt or Mrs. Peters what your midnight adventure would be if you were part of the Midnight Gang. See you soon. Bye.